for the last three months, as a congregation, we have been praying, studying the Bible, and discussing what we believe God's vision is for this congregation for the next 10 years. Our 2020 vision. The vision for what God wants us to do between now and 2020. This is a shorter version of the presentation that was given to the church on Sunday. So I will give you the summary straight up. We believe that God's vision, the vision he's given us for this congregation is simply this. That in the next 10 years that we make plans such that all the people in North West London and all the people in West Hertfordshire between the M1 and the M40, that all of them have a chance to hear the word of the Lord. That's over a million people. And we have a hundred odd members. We have 10 family groups and we pray that they will double to 20 family groups. We have 10 sets of family group leaders and we, we pray that they will double to be 20 sets of family group leaders. Uh, right now we have the concentrations of family group meetings and households of Christians in northwest London in certain places and in Hertfordshire in certain places. We want to see them expand and grow and spread such that in the whole of northwest London and the whole of West Hertfordshire that we would see it by 2020 that there would never be anybody living in those areas that was more than a 10 minute journey from a household of Christians or a family group meeting place. That's the vision we believe God has given us, a 10 minute journey. If, ever, if there's nobody out there that's more than a 10 minute journey from a household of Christians or from a family group meeting place, then we believe that they will have a chance to hear the word of the Lord. Whether they respond to it or not is their decision. We can't control that, but at least we can give them the chance to hear the word. And we know, we know that when we heard the word of the Lord, it, it, it grew in us and helped us to grow in faith and then to become a Christian. If we give people that chance, then who knows what God can do through the power of his word. We're just the, we're just the wire. God, God is the electricity current. We're the wire. But we want to be the right wiring all through northwest London and out into West Hertfordshire. That's our vision. Ten family groups to twenty family groups. 10 sets of family group leaders to 20 sets of family group leaders. People in clustered in Northwest London and West Hertfordshire, but then are spread, so there are households of Christians and 20 locations of family groups spread throughout the area so that there is nobody more than a 10 minute journey from a household, somewhere where they could learn the word of the Lord, they could hear the word of the Lord. And we believe that the work will not be done when that is set up work in some ways will still be going on and maybe even just begun but at least everybody will have then a chance to hear the word of the Lord in this area in this area we're responsible for within a generation surely that would honor God surely that would mean many would become Christians surely that would please God and that's what we're laying before the congregation to take to heart to pray about and to look for Every, each one of us, to look for your own place in this vision. What it is, that, is it that you can contribute to this vision? We know that it's more important that we be the right people, that we're devoted to God than, than the plans we make. We know it's in that way, as we're, we are the people of God, that we draw people to God, as we see in the church in the book of Acts, that they drew people to God by their, their lifestyle. And we know in that way, and we believe that in that, in that way, that, that everybody will get a chance to hear the word of the Lord. We pray and believe that our ministries, the singles ministry, the marriage ministry, the parenting ministry, the children's ministry, the teens, the preteens, all those ministries, that they will blossom as we devote ourselves to God, as we love one another, and that they, in their own way too, will attract people to God. We know that we need to be prepared to give an answer for the reason, for the hope that we have, and that means being trained and learning how to live in such a way that people ask us that question. Uh, we know that we're intended to shine like stars in the universe, Philippians 2. Uh, we need to learn how to shine. And in, as we shine, then people will ask us why we shine, and then they'll have a chance to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, we know that we need to live in such a way that we don't malign the word of the Lord, that, that people have nothing bad to say about us, that we will make the teaching about God our Saviour attractive, all those quotes from Titus chapter 2. Uh, in living in that way, People will ask us to give the reason for the hope that we have and we will have an opportunity to teach them, to share with them the word of the Lord that changed our lives and can change theirs. So we, we, we're committed to doing a lot of teaching and training over the next 10 years. 
to helping each one of us to enjoy the station in life that God has given us, whether we are single or married or a parent or whatever. We want to demonstrate to the world there is a better way to live. Our mission focus in Northwest London I've already described, but also we'll play our part in uh, international missions and the rest of the British Isles and Ireland. We really want to make a difference there too. We want to play our part. We also want to make sure that we're reflecting accurately the communities in which we live. Now, Northwest London is a very diverse area. It's 29% Asian. And the church is 2% Asian. The Northwest London is 12.5% black and the Northwest is 63% black. Uh, the white population in Northwest London is 51%, and in the Northwest we're 34%. Yeah, other groups are represented by 7.5% in Northwest London and 1% in the church. There, there are some differences there. There are some parts of our society that we're not being effective in reaching out to. The borough of Harrow is the most religiously diverse local authority area in the whole of the United Kingdom. There is a 62% chance that any two random people that bump into each other in Harrow will be from uh, a different religion. We have the largest membership of any synagogue in the whole of Europe in the northwest of London. It's an incredibly varied area. Uh, we have the highest concentration of Gujarati Hindus uh, in the whole country here in northwest London. So we're a very diverse area. Our congregation is very diverse, but there are some parts of our society that we're not touching. So we need to learn better how to reach out to those people. We are going to play our part in international missions. We're going to continue with our work connected with the church in Mumbai. We're also going to continue with our connection with the church in Dublin, do our best to support them. We're going to play our part in the strengthenings of the smaller churches around the British Isles. It's already been announced. And also in future plantings of congregations in the British Isles. And we pray that many of our members here in the Northwest will go, be sent, and take part in those strengthenings and plantings. In the northwest of London, we want to fill in the gaps. Uh, we don't have much on the Edgware branch of the Northern Line in terms of family groups. We don't have much actually on the Jubilee Line. We have uh, clusterings on the Bakerloo and clusterings on the Metropolitan, but there are large parts of those tube lines and those areas of northwest London where we really don't have much of a Christian presence. And so we aim, by God's grace, to uh, uh, as the family groups grow and, and split and birth new family groups to put them in areas where currently we don't have effective means of outreach. The same is true outside London, uh, going from the uh, M1 across to the M40. The M1 side will overlap a bit with the north and the M40 will overlap a bit with the west, but we want to fill that area with hearing the word of the Lord. And so we have at the moment two family groups out there in Rickmansworth and Watford. We aim again as those split and grow and split and grow that they will spread up the A41 towards Aylesbury, the M1 towards Luton and the M40 towards High Wycombe. And in that way, we will spread the word across the whole of that region. That's our prayer. So please do be praying for that. We want to see that all who live in this area have a chance to hear the word of the Lord. So to summarize, we're praying that we go from 10 family groups to 20 family groups in the next 10 years. That we go from 10 sets of leaders of family groups to 20 sets of leaders. That we find that within those 10 years that then there will be nobody in West Hertfordshire or in North West London who is more than a 10 minute journey from a household of Christians or the location of a family group. Let's pray for that. Please pray for that with all your heart. We believe God has laid this on our hearts. We'll need more resources for that. We, I believe, in the next 10 years can see an eldership in Northwest London. Many deacons, more evangelists, uh, teachers, uh, leaders of family groups and leaders of all kinds for all kinds of ministries. We need more of that and those people are mostly already here in this congregation. So I encourage you to ask yourself what is the part that you can play in leading this? Uh, what will it take uh, to take us forward in the next 10 years? It'll take a lot of faith in action. Galatians 5 verse 6, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Faith in action. Faith of mine, faith of yours in action is what it'll take. It'll also take a lot of heart, a lot of love, loving people, loving people deeply from the heart. First Peter chapter 1 verse 22, not superficial love. It'll take gifts being offered. First Peter 4 verse 10, use whatever gift God has given you. 
Uh, we've got gifts. Every single one of us has got a gift, maybe several gifts. It's time to use them, offer them in service to God, offer them in service to other people. It's also going to take skill, faith, heart, gifts, and skill. Uh, we may have gifts, but we need to use, learn how to use them skillfully. We need to be trained. Ephesians 4 verse 12 talks about that idea that we need to be equipped. And by being equipped, it's not just being pointed out what we can do, but how to use it. So I ask all of our members to reflect on this and to resolve to grow in faith, to grow in having a, a bigger heart, to grow in offering our gifts and to be willing, to be trained, to be further skilled to use these gifts for God's glory. So what next? Well, what's next is each ministry needs to start making plans. We're talking about vision today much more than plans. Now the ministries need to start making plans. Children's ministry, teen ministry, singles ministry, marriage ministry, making plans. Family groups need to be making plans. How are we going to split? How are we going to birth a new group? Who's going to lead it? Who's going to be in it? Where should the next location be? Perhaps some of us could we move somewhere to start a new group. Start making plans. It won't all happen in the next six months. It may not happen, some of it, in the next six years. But in the ten years to come, what can God do? Of course, I think he could do a lot more even than we are asking or imagine. But let's at least ask or imagine these things. Family groups need to make plans. Members need to make plans. We all do. How can God use us? Where can he use us? And as a leadership team, please pray for us as we do our best to discern God's will to also make plans for this congregation. It's time for us to think about where our personal vision intersects with this vision that God has given us. Where does our family's vision intersect and connect with this vision that God has given us for the next 10 years? Where do your gifts connect with this vision? There's some way. Every member has been given or sent a handout. We're asking everybody to fill it in, one copy to keep for yourself and one copy to hand in to the leadership team so that we can find the information to, to put it together to make the plans that can see this vision come true. So please be filling that in and bring that back or email it in by this coming Sunday, the, uh, the end of May, the last Sunday in May, and that will help us as we go forward to make more and more plans. In closing, it's important that we remember some principles. Firstly, humility. Psalm 127 says that unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Let's stay humble. God may change our plans. It's his prerogative. He may change the vision, and certainly that's, that's uh, he is sovereign. So we need to be humble about these plans. They're not cast in stone as such. But secondly, we also need to remember that it's really about faith. John 14 verse 12, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Do we really have the faith that God could do this in 10 years? That's a challenge to my faith. I expect it's a challenge to yours. But let it be that the challenge to our faith helps us to rise to that challenge and really trust God and believe in his power, not in our limitations. And finally, we need to be a prayerful people. Again, in that passage in John 14, Jesus said, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Prayer. We prayed a lot about discovering this vision. It is vital that we continue to pray about his implementation and about the how God will do it. God is the one who figures out the how, but it's prayer makes it clear and will show us our part in it. So let's be humble, let's have faith, and let's be a prayerful people so that by 2020 we see not 10 but 20 family groups. We see not every, uh, large areas of this northwest London and, and West Hertfordshire where we don't really have a Christian presence. Instead of that we see households of Christians and we see family group meetings so that everybody is no more than a 10 minute journey from a household of Christians or a family group meeting place. I think that's a vision worth praying for. I think that's a vision worth sacrificing for. I think it's a vision worth working for. And I believe it's a vision that God has laid on our hearts. Please pray about this fervently. Ask yourself what part you play. God has given us a vision.